Alright, let's talk about Resurrection of Evil, the one and only expansion for Doom 3. Yeah, that's right, an expansion, do you remember those? Well, once upon a time before the video game industry was saturated with paid DLCs, pre-order bonuses, season passes and microtransactions, there was the game, and if it was popular enough, an expansion to extend its lifespan. Every major game had them, and they were essentially a brand new game, although the storyline was generally shorter, and they ran on the same engine. But the amount of content you got was much more than you get today, and Resurrection of Evil is no exception. The game begins at an excavation site two years after the events of Doom 3. You're playing as a different marine this time. You find a demon artifact, and, well, do I need to say more? It opens a portal, and the forces of hell begin a new invasion. Yeah, you'd think they would have learnt by now to stop meddling with this kind of shit. But anyway, from that point the fun begins. You're put right into the action. No navigating dark hallways or operating claw machines. This game stays true to its format. And because of that, it's actually better than Doom 3, apart from being a lot shorter. There seems to be more monsters and just more action in general. It's great. But there are some things they didn't fix. For example, most of Doom 3 was set in Mars City Space Station. So you'd think this game would have more levels set in hell. But no. Once again, you're in hell for the last few maps. Although thankfully, it's more illuminated this time. Yeah, and speaking of the light, do you remember the whole flashlight fiasco? Do you remember how you were constantly switching between the flashlight and your weapons? Well, get this. The flashlight is now mounted to your pistol. Yeah, your pistol. Now, aside from being the shittiest weapon in the game, you can never seem to find the ammunition for it. So, I would have actually preferred the normal flashlight, because at least that has a bash attack. I can't do anything with an empty pistol. What a cruel, cruel joke. They also forgot to buff the shotgun and the machine gun. These are still the most common weapons you find, and they're so bad. But it's all worth it when you find the double-barreled shotgun. Along with the chain gun and the plasma rifle, it's easily the best weapon in the game. With its stopping power, everything you shoot just explodes. It's very satisfying. There's also a new weapon called the Grabber, which is just the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. It's nothing to brag home about. I hardly used it. You can also use the artifact you find at the start as a weapon. After you defeat each boss, it becomes more and more powerful, possessing the ability to slow time, increase your damage, and become invulnerable. It's essential in the occasional tight situation, but you never really use it that much. You recharge it by taking the souls from dead bodies. Yeah, how grim. Towards the end of the game, you meet Dr. McNeil, who tells you that the artifact you have is actually the heart of hell. Yeah, that seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? But to stop the invasion, you have to take it back to hell and destroy it. How cliché. And the cutscenes really struggle this time around. See, that's what happens. The older your Xbox gets, the harder it becomes to process stuff like this. That, or the disc is just scratched. I mean, the fact that the audio can't even sync up just shows how much it's struggling. Dr. McNeil, our assumptions were correct. The artifact is a weapon of unbelievable power. Yes, but it looks like there's more to all of this than we had thought. The ancients write of three unstoppable beasts, horrific and that powerful the demons they call the Hunters. Apparently a reference to their protection of the artifact. There are a few new enemies, but since the game is kind of short, it makes sense that they didn't add in too many. I guess the main ones of interest are the Bruiser, and the Lost Souls, who now look as they did in Classic Doom. Alright, let's talk about the final boss. Do you remember the Maledict flying towards the screen at the end of Doom 3? Well, here he is, and once again, the fight's pretty damn easy. You use the artifact to slow time, and then you just blast it with everything you've got. And that's it. You shove the thing in its mouth, and you're done. Honestly, the game ends quite abruptly. The screen just fades to white, and then you hear this. Marine? Marine, welcome home. Yeah, what an ending that was. On the wiki page, I've seen that there are different interpretations of this ending. Most imply that the Marine survived and was taken to hospital on Mars or Earth, and has just regained consciousness. Other theories state that both Dr. McNeil and the Marine die and go to heaven due to their sacrifices. Another darker theory states that Dr. McNeil is actually evil, and she sent the Marine to hell so she could trap him. There's never been any confirmation by ID Software of what actually happened, so it's open entirely to speculation. And in the end, that's the way a story should be. And so, that's Resurrection of Evil. I know this review wasn't that long, but there wasn't much to talk about that I hadn't already mentioned in my Doom 3 video. After all, this is an expansion we're playing. 
Now to be honest, I found it more appealing than the regular game. And yes, I know Doom 3 is meant to be more of a horror game, not an action game. But with Resurrection of Evil, there's none of that boring stuff. It focuses more on just shooting the shit out of monsters. And that's what Doom is all about. FPS sci-fi action at its finest.